Um, so Susan, uh, you, you kind of sit more behind the scenes. You work on processes. They call you the queen of process mapping. And what that means is you're working on systems, processes, and it's something that visionaries never uh, maybe enjoy. And, it, and I was doing a podcast the other day. We were talking about systems and processes, and it was also about freedom. And I was talking to Brian Snyder, who's the CEO of Simple Wholesaling, and and we were talking about how processes is not they're not sexy, right? No, but no visionary likes to talk about processes or do processes. And then I caught myself saying, if you don't have process, you will never be free. And that and I think that's the key, right? Um, so you're the queen of process mapping, and so talk about kind of what you do and why is it important for businesses to to map out their systems and their processes. Sure. So it's funny because we all have a process in our business, whether we want to admit it or not, we do something either. Maybe we change it a little bit every time we do it, but we, we have repeatable things we do every single day in our business. And if you're ever wanting to scale or to get yourself out of the seat you're taking, you're sitting in, you've got to be able to document how you do it because that's how you want the, pe the person behind you to come do it behind you. And if to give your team and give your employees clarity on the next step, on who's accountable for the next step, on what's what step is next to be taken. If we don't outline those things, we, we kind of put our employees in this maze and say, figure it out. So then, then they don't repeat it and they don't do it the same way every time. They, you know, they'll miss a step or skip something that was very important. And we, you know, so then it makes us go backwards in the process to have to redo. Um, it just, it saves time. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I can get visionaries to realize that this is going to, the hour worth of work it takes to document a process will save you hundreds of hours of all these questions of what do I do now? It's, it's immediately, here's your job. Here's these steps you're going to take. Any questions? You know, at that point, it's follow the process to the T. If there's an exception to the process, that's what we need a manager for. The manager steps in and says, okay, this is, you know, an abnormal situation. Let's out veer outside of the process on this step, but let's jump right back into the next and keep going. Yeah. So it just helps us all to be able to delegate what we want off of our plates. Yeah. I always tell people, Brett, that the process manages 75% of what our employees do, right? So if you don't have a process, right, then you are not giving your people a roadmap to success. You're not giving your business a roadmap to success. So if 75% of what we do can be managed by a process and it doesn't need a person to manage it, it needs a process to manage it, then we need leaders, managers for that exception, that 25% that falls outside of the process. We never document the exceptions in a process. We just document the rule, like what the rule is, because the exceptions are then managed by people, right? Mm -hmm. And here's the problem, Brett, that when we don't have a process, then everything's an exception. Yep. Mm, I like that. I'm going to put that behind me on a sign. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So when you guys walk into like a business or organization, I, I'm always just curious, like, what do you see? Like you've worked with 500 businesses. What What's like some of the common things that you walk in? You're like, oh my gosh, this is, this is nuts. Why are you doing this? And like, what's some of the common mistakes? Well, I mean, we just left processes. I'll tell you, number one common mistake is nobody has processes, right? Or, or nor do they put a priority around it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. And so they put their employees in a maze. And we, we know that there are typically eight different, what we call eight deadly sins of waste where it causes a business to fail, right? Or has a problem. And of all those eight deadly sins, seven of them are process related. And only one is behavioral related or people related. So people will get rid of the employee that's screwing up the process, not fix the process, hire an employee, and they're in the same boat. Same mm -hmm. problem occurs mm -hmm. because they didn't take the effort to fix the process in the first place. So sometimes so, it's not the person, it's the process. Right. Well, Most seven of eight, seven or eight times is not the person, it's the right. process. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. No, that's yeah, crazy. I think that is one of the biggest keys that we help businesses with, but I also think it's making sure everybody knows the direction we're going. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, visionaries love to, you know, maybe they don't even have a clue as to what and where and why they're going, where they're going. And, you know, setting that goal out there really helps 
everyone on board, you know, row in the same direction. Gary's got a great story about that, but, um, and, and, and it helps that visionary to hold something accountable. It's like, Hey, this is what I want. This is where we're going. Let's get there. And then kind of check marking the box off along. Yeah. We're, we've made it this far and we're going to keep going. It, it just gives us a, you know, something to reach for. Wayne asked me one time, Brad, he said, Gary, if you weren't a business coach, right? If you weren't a business strategist and you were a business assassinator, <laughs> what tool would you use? What seven tools would you use to destroy business? And I thought about it and I said, what a demented question, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, my, my answer was I only need one tool. Yeah. I, if I could kill the lines of communication mm. in a business, I could shut any business down in under three weeks. Mm -hmm. Think about it. My dad was in the military for 21 years. And he said, Gary, our number one objective every time we went into the battle, because he was in a couple of wars, he says, was to take out the lines of communication. If you control the lines of communication, you control the supply lines and you remove, you know, you remove all hope from people. Yeah. Right. And so that's what's really important. You know, in the Bible is filled with stories, power of Babel. Right. They had the wrong purpose. God confused, compounded the language. They stopped any progress. But it's also used in, you know, in Pentecost Sunday, where they wanted to do something great and they couldn't because nobody understood each other and they could all understand each other and during that time. And so communication, and God has shown us over and over again, communication is a key. One of the things that was really interesting, this is, goes back to you, is I was at CG about a year ago or six months ago, somewhere in that time frame, and De Mark Del Latour was talking about his integrator and how well they got along, blah, blah, blah. And I looked at his profile. I'm like, not really the ideal profile for integrator. Like, why does it work? And then I looked at uh, Brian. I'm like, wow, why does it work with Brian? Brian's not the ideal profile either. So how does it work? And what I found was the common theme and the common thread to all these different people that do well with their visionary integrator relationship and now owner of visionary relationship is that you guys have the same communication style. Mm -hmm. NPI, I looked at your and Brian's communication style, it's the exact same. Mm -hmm. You guys communicate the same way. And because of that, you trust quicker, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so communication is one of the biggest things we walk in, there's no communication. Yeah. And there's, and so because of that, there's no accountability, mm -hmm. right? And so we talk about process, process and accountability, but it's also a better way to communicate. It's, it gives tools of communication. But communication is probably the biggest one. The other thing that I'll tell you that I find in businesses a lot when we go in is uh, I read a book a couple of years ago, a year ago now. It was called Broken Windows, Broken Business. And it talks about the importance of the small things, the little things. And when we go into little, we go into businesses, they just don't do the little things right. Yeah. They're great at making money. They can buy and sell a house and like, you know, and, 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 and literally change the world with things, but they don't do the little things right. Like a PL. Like a PL and like processes. And it's and, it, and honestly, people are like, what do you do? What's what do you make? How do you make a difference? We we make you do the little things. Mm -hmm. Just get good at the little things. And one of the little things is, Brett, so broken windows, right? Broken windows in a business. I've looked now almost 20 years at looking at different businesses and go, what's that first broken window that causes it to fall apart? You know what it is? The very first broken window is not communication. It's not complacency. The first broken window is gratitude. Hmm. Wow. The number one thing we see is when people stop being grateful in their business, they stop being grateful for their people. They stop being grateful for the success. They stop being grateful for their spouse. They stop being grateful for the, the God and the life that he's given them. They stop it. And you know what happens when we stop being grateful? We start becoming entitled. And that's where our world right. world is filled with people that are entitled right now because we stop being grateful. You, Brett, you know this and people think this is the stupidest thing ever. I've heard like 20 people tell me, I can't believe you make this do this every time. But every meeting we start, every meeting we start, Brett, we start it with what? Do you remember? We started with good news. Good news. Why? Because we're trying to protect the broken window of gratitude. Yeah. We want to force you to be grateful so that you don't become entitled. Because here's what happens. Gratitude gives way to ingratitude. Grat ingratitude gives way to entitlement. Entitlement gives way to bitterness. Bitterness creates silos. Silos breaks down communication. Communication creates complacency. And you know the compound effect after that. It's a cancer. Everything's cancer after that. Amen.
but it all goes back to being grateful. What did God do to the Israel to the Israelites in the in the wilderness when they stopped being grateful? He said, "This isn't something I want to be part of. You're not going into the promised land because you've stopped being grateful, mm-hmm. right?" And I wonder how often we rob ourselves of success daily, weekly, and in our lifetime because we just start feeling entitled. No, I think it's I, it's an easy thing to do, uh, especially, and I see it happen all the time. And and you know, as the business owner, we we see it too, right? The guy comes in, they're so thankful, they have this job, and they hated their last job. And they come in and now they start making a little bit more money. And then a couple of years later, they're making a lot of money yeah. and then it's still not good enough. And we think, but, but you just, you just came in, you, you were, you hated your job and you're making three times now. And, uh, but as an owner too, we, we can, we get into that mode too. So I think it's great just to start off each day with that, with gratitude, good news, um, I definitely love that uh, for sure. And again, if you guys are listening to this, check out Sharper Business Solutions and uh, Gary and Susan, their team. Uh, You guys have a lot of family working for your team. Just an amazing team to work with. Um, And and it's just awesome. So thank you so much for checking out the Brett Snodgrass channel. If you like this video, please slam on that like button. And if you really like it, then subscribe to our channel here. And remember to leave us a comment below. And I'm going to try my hardest to reply to all the comments. Thank you guys so much. This is why I do what I do. Every single week, I come out with content that focuses on success, freedom, and living out your purpose. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.